Antidepressants are just like heroin. That's the claim from RFK Jr. And shockingly, some clinicians are echoing it. But here's the problem. Not only is it wrong, it's wrong in two completely different ways. I'm Dr. Sunil Rege, psychiatrist and educator. I prescribe and de-prescribe antidepressants as part of my work. I also work in addiction medicine and pain medicine, managing individuals who use opioids, come off opioids, and help them taper opioids safely. So I've seen both sides of this. In this video, we'll cover the neuroscience of addiction, why SSRIs aren't heroin, what withdrawal really means, and why saying antidepressants are just like heroin gets both the science and the story completely wrong. So let's start off with what addiction really is. Addiction isn't just withdrawal. It's about salience, compulsion, and craving. Here's how heroin works. It hits fast, binds to mu opioid receptors, activates D1 dopamine receptors, resulting in intense euphoria. The brain encodes this as salient attention grabbing. With repeated use, dopamine drops. The stress state comes up, known as hyperkatephaya. Craving and compulsion emerge. That's addiction. Addiction rewires the brain to seek, chase, and need the substance. Heroin hijacks the brain's reward system. That's not what SSRIs do. So let's ask, do SSRIs trigger this cascade? No, and here's why. SSRIs don't activate the dopamine surges or the D1 receptor. There's no high, no salience, no reinforcement loop. If anything, SSRIs reduce emotional reactivity. They don't amplify reward. And we know this because at certain doses, they can lead to emotional blunting. SSRIs also don't lead to the hit. Why? Because of their half-lives. Take fluoxetine, a long half-life. Take the others, half-lives between 24 to 72 hours. Very different from heroin. There's no loop, no chasing, no addiction. SSRIs may lead to withdrawal, but that's not addiction. Here's the other issue no one seems to mention. Antidepressants aren't one class. Bupropion is an NDRI, noradrenergic dopaminergic reuptake inhibitor. Agamelatine, melatonergic, and increases dopamine noradrenaline in the prefrontal cortex. Vortioxetine, multimodal, minimal withdrawal, minimal sexual side effects. Mirtazapine, dual action. Serotonin specific antagonist at lower doses, noradrenergic potentiator at higher doses. SNRIs are different from SSRIs, which are different from other novel agents. So when someone says antidepressants are like heroin, what exactly are they talking about? Broad generalizations is not equal to evidence. Saying all antidepressants cause withdrawal or addiction is like saying all antibiotics cause diarrhea. It's not just wrong, it's lazy. But let's examine SSRIs and withdrawal and why withdrawal is not equal to addiction. SSRIs are associated with withdrawal. That's real. But so can caffeine, exercise, or even sleep deprivation. That doesn't mean that sleep, caffeine, or exercise are addictive objects. You see, withdrawal is the body's adjustment process that occurs after the body has reached a certain steady state. This is known as the homeostatic disruption, not a reinforcement loop. So addiction is salience plus craving plus compulsion. SSRIs don't meet those criteria. So what's actually happening when one's tapering SSRIs and experiencing withdrawals? Here's what we often miss. Step one, SSRIs were started to treat distress. Two, they helped restore some stability, especially if one stayed on it over an extended period. Third, the person then decides to taper. This decision to taper usually occurs when the person's reached stability for a reasonable period of time. Some come off easily. Some taper over time. Some decide to stay on it long term. And yes, in some cases, Withdrawal can last longer than expected, what we call protracted withdrawal. But that's a combination of the underlying vulnerability, the sensitized stress system, the illness severity, and prescribing without proper planning. 
So this is the key lesson. Good deprescribing starts with good prescribing. But this is not about blaming the medication. Molecules aren't the issue. Context and clinical skill are. And that's what we teach at the Academy by Psych Scene. How to prescribe and deprescribe with depth, context, and nuance. Because the medication only becomes alive within the doctor-patient relationship. So let me summarize all of this for you. Heroin leads to addiction via dopamine hijack. SSRIs modulate neurotransmitter systems via serotonergic potentiation. Withdrawal is not equal to addiction. And antidepressants are not one-size-fits-all agents. So therefore, false comparisons hurt patients. They erode trust in treatment. We owe our patients better, and it starts with clarity. So if you're still here watching, I know you care about nuance. So hit the subscribe button. If you like the video, leave a like, drop a comment. And if you're a clinician, check out the Academy by Psych Scene, where we teach the neuroscience that doesn't find its way into psychiatry training. I'm Dr. Sunil Rege, and this is Psychiatry Simplified. Until the next video, stay curious. Bye-bye.